there's something that seems to plague a lot of people as they get rolling and start getting into business. It's the problem of time. How do I get it all done? What I've learned about time is that it's not just time management. It's not managing the time. We all get the same amount every day. So it's not that I want you to learn how better to manage your time. It's that I want you to learn how to master your time. How do you master the amount of time that you get? How do you make sure that the time that you get is allotted properly and wisely to actually move you forward in achieving those big goals? Well, I'm going to share with you just a couple of different ideas. We could actually spend all day here talking about mastering time. But I want to share with you just a few really choice ideas on this area. One is, you need to be 100% responsible. It's not someone else's fault that you didn't get your main tasks done today. It's not your spouse's fault. It's not the fault of your children. It's not the fault of your staff who barged in on your office, into your office and interrupted you multiple times a day. It's not the fault of the phone. It's not Facebook's fault. <laughs> you need to be responsible. You have to own it. And once you decide that I own it, I'm 100% responsible for how my time gets used, things start to change. And you realize that I actually have more control than I thought. Because there are two schools of thought. I'm out of control with time. I'm reacting to what happens during the day. Some days are good. Some days not so good. Mm -mm. You can't think like that. Super achievers don't think like that. They make every day count and they get done what they want to get done. And here's how they do it. They build a wall around it. They put up boundaries and set rules so that they can get done what they want to get done. So what's an example of that? Well, between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock, I don't answer the phone. Or between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, my door is closed. And when my door is closed, that means no interruptions, unless it's an emergency. If the place is burning down, I want to know. But if it's not, my door is closed. If people work in a queue, you can put up that yellow caution tape. And when that caution tape is up, or you have a little hanging sign you put on the outside of your queue, I'm heads down right now. No interruptions. You turn the phone off. You build a wall around it. You have an auto reply on your email that says, I only check my email a couple times a day. If this is urgent, then you may want to send me a message via text, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That's building a wall around it. If you've ever seen someone do that, that's what they're doing. They're building a wall around it. They don't answer the phone when it rings, because they know if it's important, it'll go to message, and they can check it later. And if it's really important, the person might call back multiple times. And insiders will know how to get to that person if it's really, really important. Because you have your own little inner circle that you build the wall around and they know how to get in. They know the back door. So it doesn't mean that nobody can ever reach you, but it means the general public cannot interrupt you. The people that don't know. Here's how Dan Kennedy does it. Dan Kennedy is one of our nation's most successful marketing minds. People pay him thousands of dollars a day for his consulting attention. Dan doesn't have a smartphone. He only has a landline. And he only answers his landline when you have an appointment. Otherwise, you reach his gatekeeper. He will never answer his phone. Dan doesn't have email. I know you're speechless. <laughs> in 2015, Dan does not have an email address. Dan still uses a fax machine. If you want to send him a message, you send it to him via fax. Pretty crazy, right? In my office where we have 30 different businesses, we all share one fax machine. That's, that's where the lowly fax has gotten now. Right? It's just not that important anymore. But to Dan, it's really important because that's how he gets messages. And he has an assistant that takes the faxes, goes through them, decides which ones are important and worthy of Dan's attention, and then puts them in an envelope and sends them to Dan, and he looks at them all at once. Not one at a time like we look at our email. He does it all at once. And someone's already filtered them. 
pretty cool. So he takes calls by appointment. He doesn't do email. Of course he doesn't do social media. <laughs> he has other people do social media for him because he doesn't see how that writes books and fills conferences and gets thousands of dollars a day in consulting appointments. So he doesn't do any of that. So Dan has built this wall around himself and that's allowed him to be what you might call hyper-productive. He just feels he's productive. So Dan is a pretty unique character in today's society, very unique. And a person that interviewed him a few years ago said, but Dan, aren't you able to do that now because you're Dan Kennedy? He said, no, you have it wrong. You have it the other way around. I was always this way. And by being that way, it helped me to become Dan Kennedy. When you build a wall around it, it allows you to have the time to focus on your priorities every day. Because this is so important, that if we don't give time to our priorities on a regular basis, and for some of us that's every day, they just don't get done. You've probably been frustrated at the end of some days when you look at your to-do list and it's tomorrow's to-do list. Or next week's to-do list. And you think, where is all the time going? Well, if you don't put a wall around it, that's where all the time is going. If you don't create what are called power hours, power hours are an hour of completely uninterrupted, focused work on what matters most to you right now. He did this. He used to have just a few priorities. You saw on the slide before that it only had three priorities. He had just a few, and he would create power hours where he would focus just on getting work done in those key areas. And he enjoyed massive success and achieved at a very high level because he used these philosophies. This grid helps. I know this isn't as attractive as some of the other pictures, but this is just as useful. This is something that I've handed out to some of my clients who want to look at their to-do list in a different way. So when you look at this, here's how it works. You have a line going up that says increasing importance. You have a line going across saying increasing urgency. So up here are urgent and important. Down here are unimportant and not urgent. Up here is important but not urgent. And up here is, over down here is urgent but not important. Here it says must do today. Urgent and important we must do today. After you do urgent and important, you would move over to important but not urgent. Or down to urgent but not important. I would, I would suggest that you go over here because when you do this and this, oftentimes this bottom section it just goes away. They just go away because someone else takes care of it or it gets done uh, at another time. You delegate it to someone else. So if you spend most of your time in the top section, you start getting a lot of great work done. And it all happens by blocking and tackling. I know people who are excellent about keeping their appointments. They're always punctual. If you make an appointment with them to be there at 11 o'clock, by golly, they're there at 11 o'clock. Some people believe that if they're not there by 10.59, they're already late. If they're not early, they're late. That's a great philosophy. And yet those same people, when they have an appointment on their own calendar with themselves, they break it all the time. They constantly break their own commitments to themselves. And then they're frustrated at the end of the day. <laughs> I had all these appointments, and then the one appointment I had, to, I had to just take phone calls and do emails. I just couldn't get those things done because they don't block and tackle. You have to honor your own commitments to yourself. Block those times out and actually honor those times. Have that level of integrity and discipline to honor your own commitments to yourself because that's what super successful people do. That's the only way is to decide, today I have to do these things, it's going to take this much time, and therefore I'm going to block my calendar out with that much time. Because oftentimes what people do is they write the to-do list, but then they don't even think about how long will it actually take to get this done, and do I have that much time in my calendar today? So it's really more of a wish list than a to-do list. And of course, we must eliminate distractions. It's so wonderful that we have this device now. It's great. But unfortunately, it's becoming our best friend too much. We talk about smartphones way too much. We're so interested in the latest devices, and is it time to upgrade? Should I get another phone? And 
It's very popular chatter. But it can become a real problem when we become addicted to these devices and we can't put them down. And so this may be your most useful tool and your greatest enemy to real productivity. And only you know which is, which is it. So here's a little pop quiz. Raise your hand if your smartphone is the first thing you look at when you wake up. Oh yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> it's my alarm. Right, it's your alarm, but then after you turn it off, do you then pop open the email or the social media? Right? Is it the first thing that you look at? Okay, so a few of you raise your hand. Is it the last thing that you look at at the end of the day, like this guy? Including iPad. A few of you, right, including, including iPads, including iPads, including your computer. It could be a computer too, right? It could be a computer. Do you take the phone to the bathroom? All right, all right, a few people are honest about that. You know, I heard that more Android people take the phone to the bathroom than iPhone people. I'm not sure that why that is, but don't ask me what this, well, okay, you already know it's an Android, all right. Right, so, do you look at it while you're driving? Ooh. Uh, don't worry, the video camera's pointed this way. Okay, we have one person being honest. One person being honest about it. Okay, a few other people being honest about it. For, dire yeah. for directions when I press the start button. For directions. For directions. Okay, we'll give you a pass on that. Okay. Right. Yeah, you can use it as GPS. Do you look at it when you're sitting with other people at a restaurant? Ooh. Have you ever seen those people in the restaurant? And they're there together, but they're each looking at their phones. Yeah. Wow, what an awesome date night that was. Yeah. If you said yes to a few of these questions, you might be this guy. What you really need to do is think about making Habu your mantra. Who knows what Habu stands for? Well, in the next 45 seconds, you'll all be able to raise your hand. It stands for highest and best use. Highest and best use. What that means is, from moment to moment, you're thinking, what is the highest and best use of my time right now? Am I wasting my time right now, or am I putting it to its best use? What I have my clients do is to write down, how much are you worth per hour? $100, $150, $250, maybe $300 per hour? If you're worth $300 per hour, why are you doing this, this, and this during your day? Why aren't you having someone else do that for you if you're truly worth $300 an hour? Because you're not using your time to its highest and best use. We each have certain talents that we were gifted with. Usually when we apply those talents, we reach greater heights of success. But when we squander those talents and spend our time not at its highest and best use, we unfortunately do not reach the levels of success that we could. So we have to be very careful about how we spend our time. And you might want to write down on a post-it and stick it to your computer, somewhere on your desk, how much you're worth per hour. Or just use that phrase, habu. So let's review the concepts in this section. It's your time. Remember, you need to own it. Be responsible. Build a wall around it. Think Dan Kennedy. Focus on priorities like Steve Jobs did on a regular basis. Block and tackle. Have that integrity to honor your own commitments to yourself because if you don't block it out, if you don't think about how to, how to get those things done and block it, you won't get it done. Eliminate distractions and always put your time to its best use because then you run the day, not the opposite.